Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Mr. Ian Teaches English. Today we have a huge video for you. It's my longest one yet. It's about comparatives and superlatives. Now you may have already learned about this in your English education, but I find that students might know the rules but don't use them. Uh, they've got some bad habits they need to break. So maybe this is new material for you. Maybe it is a refresher, something you already know, a review. Either way, um, stay till the end to get all of the rules, all of the exceptions. Let's jump in. All right, let's talk about comparative and superlative adjectives. Now we're gonna talk about everything. So this is gonna take a while. You wanna go get some popcorn, go get a drink, pause the video, when you're ready, let's go. All right, comparative and superlative adjectives. Let's start by defining these words. What do we mean? Comparative adjectives are adjectives, so descriptive words, that compare exactly two things. For example, my brother is taller than me. Brother, me, that equals two. This is cheaper than the other one. This one? the other one that equals two all right when you make this comparison uh, or any of these comparisons you're going to use the word then if you introduce what you are also comparing you can just use the descriptive you know taller cheaper uh, but you use then if you're also introducing the other thing that you're comparing all right superlative adjectives this is three or more and many times everything for example, I'm the tallest child of all the children. You have at least three kids, maybe four, maybe five, maybe six, and you are the tallest. This is the cheapest option of all the options. Okay, so not necessarily just what you see in front of you, but all of them. And the last one, this is the most delicious meal. This means of all the meals that you have tasted. And sorry that the, uh, the words are cut off here. I'm getting better at PowerPoint. So, but the idea here is many times we are comparing everything in the world, but we don't say that. All right, so remember that the context is there for everything because of this adjective. All right, so let's talk about these rules. Now be careful with these because uh, students, I've had a lot of students over the years that make a lot of mistakes with these. So let's talk about the rule first. There are exceptions. We'll talk, we'll talk about those, but the rules. So for comparatives, the rule is add er, er to the end of the adjective. So the examples down here, my brother is tall, but I'm taller. That route is quick, but this one is quicker. And I'm emphasizing the er. Uh, number three, the first movie was long, but this one is longer. So we're comparing two things, and all of these we're comparing two things, and we do that by adding er to the end of the adjective. Now for the superlatives, when you're comparing three or more, we use the, the adjective, and add est to the end of the adjective. So I have three brothers, I'm the tallest. Now in the first example, we were comparing two brothers, so we used ER. In this example, we're comparing three brothers, or maybe you have 15 brothers, but because we have more than two, we are using the tall est with the EST at the end. The next one, there are five routes to work. This one is the quickest. Now don't forget to use the word the there. Um, it is something, some teachers don't teach that. Um, but it is necessary to use. And the third one, this is the longest movie ever. So we're comparing all movies of all times, which is definitely more than two. So the and EST. All right, now every good rule in English has exceptions and this one has three. So let's pay close attention here to figure this out. Exception number one, use more or the most before the adjective for two or more syllable words and don't use ER EST. I hear a lot of students say things like more faster. So they have the more and they have the ER. 
you'll never use both. Now, which one is correct? You need to follow the rules and uh, exceptions to figure that out, but you'll never use both. All right, let's look at some examples here. This necklace is more beautiful than that one. Beautiful, three syllables. So we use more in front of it. The superlative. This is the most beautiful necklace I've ever seen. So I've ever seen all the necklaces in the world, the most beautiful, again, beautiful, three syllables. So that's more than two. So we use the most in front of it. All right, the next set, this car is more economical than my old one. And the superlative, this is the most economical car that they make. All right, first one, we're comparing two things, so more. And the second one, comparing three or a bunch of different cars. So we use the most in front of it. Third set, my old boss was more trustworthy than my new one. And she's the most trust Percy, excuse me, she's the most trustworthy person I've ever worked for. All right, in all these examples, you can see using more and the most when a word is two or more syllables. That adjective is two or more syllables. Now, be careful with this one. This one is important because in many languages, at least the ones that I've studied, that's how you make these comparatives and superlatives. You simply say more or most in front of the adjective. But that's not the rule in English. Remember, this is an exception. So the rule is ER or EST. This is an exception. So be careful that you're not taking grammar rules from your language and just bringing them to English. Sometimes it works. In this case, it doesn't. All right, exception number two. Now this is more of a spelling exception and, and so is number three, it's a spelling exception. So here, number two, double the final consonant and add ER or EST when the word ends in CVC. Now. You say, Mr. Ian, what is CVC? CVC is consonant, V is vowel, and C, again, is consonant. If you haven't learned that about the English alphabet, we have 26 letters, we have five vowels, A, E, I, O, U, everything else is a consonant. So this is just a spelling thing, so we'll look here. First example, this summer is hotter than last year's. So the adjective here is hot, hot ends CVC, H is a consonant, V is a vowel, T is a consonant. So for spelling purposes, we double the last T before we add ER. And this is the hottest summer on record. Again, same thing except EST, and don't forget the in front of it. All right, next set of examples, I'm fatter than I was five years ago. That's not true for me. Maybe you, but not me. Anyway, here we have the word fat, F-A-T. Consonant, vowel, consonant. All right. And the superlative, my late 20s were the fattest time in my life with the E-S-T, the double T, and the. Now be careful. The examples I've chosen here, I chose them because they're very common. All of these examples of the adjectives have three letters, but that's not part of the rule. It can have a lot of letters, you know, more than three, as long as it ends in consonant, vowel, consonants, the last three letters. All right, let's look at the last set of examples. Staying in my old job would have been a bigger mistake. B-I-G, consonant, vowel, consonant, and double the G, at E-R, and then I made the biggest mistake of my life last night. The, double the G, and EST. And the last exception is two syllable words that end in Y. And again, this is just a spelling change. Uh, if you make a mistake with the spelling change, on a computer, it's probably just gonna fix it for you. Uh, and on paper, people will still understand you. So. They're not big deals, but they are rules, or sorry, they are exceptions, so I want you to know. All right, the weather is much snowier here than in my country. Snowy ends in a Y, we change it to an I and add ER, 
and this is the snowiest weather I've ever experienced. Second set of examples, your head is shinier than before you shaved your head. And this, that is the shiniest car I've ever cleaned. Shiny ends in a Y. It's a two syllable word, shiny. So take that Y and add the ER or EST. And the last one, this house is tinier than your old place. And this house is the tiniest of the ones we've seen today. So tiny, T-I-N-Y, two syllables, tiny. We take away the Y, we change it for an I, and add ER or EST. All right, if you have an example of a word that you're not sure about, put it in the comments, uh, let me know. There are some exceptions to these exceptions. Yay! All right, so common rule breakers, these are ones that are just a little bit different. Uh, you may have already learned these, but good is not gooder and goodest, although I have heard that. Um, good becomes better and then the best. Bad becomes worse and then the worst. Don't forget your the. And far becomes farther or further. They have the same meaning. I don't know why we have two spellings for it, but we do. And then because English is super fun, um, sometimes you can use both. This is rare though, so don't count on this. And I would use the rules, go through it. Use the rules and the exceptions instead of just guessing or trying. So friendlier or more friendly are both acceptable. The friendliest and the most friendly is also acceptable. So nobody's going to think it sounds weird if you say that. All right, now let's do some practice. Now this practice uh, is about all of the ideas that we've talked about. It's about the rules. It's about the exceptions. So take a minute. I gave you the adjective here in parentheses. Take a second, pause the video, uh, see if you can get it right. All right, we're back. So um, I'll read it. I'll put the answers on the, on the board here. If you have questions about them, please let me know. Put it in the comments. Ask me a question. Happy to help you. All right, the first one, you're faster than your dad. We're comparing two people here. The second one, his room is the smelliest in the house. So assuming you have more than two rooms in your house, uh, this would be a superlative. This test is harder than you think. So comparing what's real and what you think, those are two things. My time in Paris was the best, comparing it to every other time that you've had. Number five, this is the most delicious food I've ever eaten. Delicious, three syllables. Number six, I felt lonelier when I lived by myself than now, comparing two times. You lived by yourself and now. Number seven, this is the thinnest piece of wood I could find. So we're assuming you're looking through lots of different pieces of wood, and that is the thinnest. And number eight, my new computer is cooler than yours. We're comparing two things, my computer, your computer, so we use that rule there. It doesn't fit any of the exceptions, so we use the rule. Please, if you have questions about these, let me know down in the chat and I'll help you out. All right, is that it? No, don't forget about comparing things in a diminutive way. This means in a smaller way. Many times teachers teach this like in a greater way, but not the opposite. So let's look at those, it's easier, so don't panic. The rules for this are to use less or the least before the adjective. So using the examples that we had before, I'm just changing it to talk about it from the opposite perspective, the opposite way. I'm less tall than my brother. We're comparing two, so we use the word less. Or the superlative, I'm the least tall of all my brothers. Number two, this is the less quick route. There's five routes to work. This is the least quick. And you have to forgive my um, subject verb agreement there. It should be there are five routes to work. I apologize. Number three, the first movie was long. This one is less long. And this is the least long movie ever. Now, 
Those sound weird. Um, I do have a little note here. It is more common to use just the opposite adjective. So it's more common to say this movie was, uh, instead of less long, to say this movie was shorter. It is more common to do that, but sometimes you can. And there are situations where you want to describe things in a smaller, diminutive way. So you could do that now. Now, the other rule had three exceptions. Are there exceptions for this rule? No, no exceptions. Yay. All right, so is that it? No, don't forget about comparing things that are the same. Sometimes you compare things and they're exactly the same in how you describe them. Let's look at the rules for that. The rule here is to use as before and after the adjective. And these are used with be verbs. You'll see in all of the examples here, I have some form of the verb be because it is used when we talk like this. So number one, I'm as tall as my brother. You are exactly the same height. When we compare you, it is the same. Number two, this route is as quick as the other one. All right, it's exactly the same quickness. We compare them, it's the same. This is how we describe it. And number three, as bad as that first movie was, I don't wanna watch another one. So sort of assuming that if we compare this first movie to the next one, it's going to be the same. All right, so looking at those, any other rules, anything else? No, you're good. Um, these are a little bit more common. I would say the, this comparison is more common than the diminutive one we just talked about. So pay attention to that when you're speaking or listening or reading. Why is this important? I like to ask this question at the end of all of my videos because there's a lot to learn from the English language and you kind of have to focus on the things that are more important first. What's gonna help you with your communication? And this is important. You need to be able to compare things. If you cannot show somebody something is better or something is worse, then you're going to have a difficult time describing things in English, especially if it's important. If you're comparing ideas about where to move, places, jobs, this is an important way to speak. Now, making mistakes in this is going to sound bad. It's going to sound strange. I told you that I hear my students say more faster sometimes. And when they do that, I notice it hurts my English ear. And uh, when you're trying to do something that's important, you want it to be smooth and you want people to understand you. So I think this is incredibly important. I think students learn it at a lower level, but as they continue in English, they don't remember these rules. They have bad habits of using grammar from their language in English, which makes for some bad sounding sentences. So. If you have any questions about what we talked about here, please put it in the comments. Let me know this is something that is important. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you are not subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing. I release a video almost every day and a little bit of English every day goes a long way. If you have questions about this material, if you think that I made a mistake or if I got something wrong or if I missed something, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, I am here to help you be more confident in your English, and I hope that's what this video does. So until next time, we'll see you.